Hi, my name's Gina and I've been asked to do a talk about the time I saw Elvis in concert in San Francisco. Before I go into any detail, I need to give you some background information. In 1976, when I went to San Francisco to see Elvis, there was no internet, no email, no digital cameras, DVDs or CDs. So all the arrangements leading up to our trip from Melbourne to, in Australia to San Francisco had to be done by letters or phone calls. My husband at the time and I were running the Elvis fan club in Victoria and we were in contact with Elvis fan clubs all over the world and had pen pals everywhere. One day in 1976, Wayne got a letter from a pen pal in San Francisco saying Elvis was doing a concert there and she had spare tickets and would we like to come? Well, of course. <laughs> But after the delays in the email, um, oh sorry, email, the delays in the letters coming back and forth, um, us or getting time off our jobs, getting $2,000 for the airfare, organising that, we wrote back and saying yes we were coming. She wrote back and said, oh I'm sorry it's been a month since I heard from you. I didn't think you were coming so I've sold the tickets to someone else. Well, that didn't matter. She said, I can get tickets from scalpers, but they'll be expensive, 50 bucks each. Well, by the time we paid the $2,000 in airfare, really, who cares about another $50? So by the time we sort of got the um, nitty-gritty of organising them to meet us at the airport and so on, we were at, it, we'd come to doing it in phone calls because letters were just taking too long. So we left Melbourne on Saturday morning and arrived in San Francisco on Friday night, as you do. We had a great weekend talking Elvis and playing records and just chatting in general, getting to know our hosts. On Sunday night, we drove out to the Cow Palace. Now, the Cow Palace in San Francisco, I can only do this diagram from what I remember. But I think it held between 14 and 17,000 people. So if you look at this diagram, the stage was in sort of the middle of the, um, the auditorium. You had seats all around it. The band was there and Elvis was there. Either side of the stage, there was a ramp. The entertainers would drive in underground and then come up the ramp to get on the stage. So just before the concert started they were rolling a red carpet out here so naturally all the kids in the front, people in the front were sort of running over here or trying to get a vantage view in case Elvis came out. Our seats were here, front row but just on the side on the corner. Okay. When we were sitting there before the concert started we noticed Colonel Parker and Linda Thompson and we thought, oh wow it'd be great to talk to them they happened to turn around and see our t-shirts, Elvis Presley Fan Club of Victoria. And naturally they were interested. They were, oh, where's that? Where are you? Where are you from? So on. Oh, Australia, wow, we've come for the, for the weekend to see Elvis. And they just thought that was sensational. Wayne talked to Colonel Parker and I talked to Linda. And she was just lovely. She was just such a lovely lady. And it wasn't until very recently, 46 years down the track, I found out that she and Elvis actually had an argument that night and split up. But at the time, yeah, she was there. It was great. So that's here it was. When the Elvis was due to come on, um, the lights went dark, well the Stewart Stadium went dark, and the spotlight was sort of roving around and it shone on there. Everybody thought Elvis was going to come out there. All of a sudden it swung back here. Elvis came out on the ramp and he walked up. He walked the right past where we were sitting to get up to the stage. Well, I just can't tell you. I just can't tell you what it was. <laughs> I've got something written down here. He came out of the stage, he walked right past us. He was so close I could have reached out and touched him, but I didn't, of course. <laughs> I'll never forget. Oh, no. um, yeah. do, do, do. Uh, no. Anyway, I've got it written somewhere. Oh, yeah. I'll always remember when Elvis walked past so close, how incredibly handsome he was. His suntanned skin, deep blue eyes and that classic profile like a Greek god of mythology. I'll always remember his voice, his magnificent voice. It was so powerful, a hundred times better than any of his records. Anyway, let's look at some of the photos I took. These were slides that I converted into negatives and then had prints done off. So this is my album. Just going to close that line if it's a bit bright. I was juggling two cameras on my lap during the whole concert, a movie camera which I wasn't allowed to use, the guards 
security guards took the film out of it, so that was that. But the other camera was a, a 35mm and I had a telephoto lens, which I didn't need because I was looking, was sitting so close. But at one stage, I wanted, Elvis walked around, where's my, he would walk around from here, around the stage and sing to everybody so all the people could see him. He was just fantastic. And one stage he was walking toward us and I thought to myself, I want a really good close-up photo. So that was when he was walking toward us. And I stood up on my seat and screamed, as you do, I love you, Elvis. And he heard me and he looked at me. That was just amazing. And that's when I got that photo. I'll just treasure that photo. It was wonderful. So these are some of the photos I took. I did write down all the songs that he sang on a piece of paper, but um, unfortunately I don't have that piece of paper now, but I did find out on the internet um, what he was singing and I was just so thrilled because he sang some of my favourite songs, Love Letters and Fever for a start. Um, oh, and when he, <laughs> when he sang Fever, you've probably seen it on YouTube, he sang it, he just does that little twitch and everybody scream, wow. God, he was sexy. He was so cross. Just gorgeous. <laughs> and he sang Teddy Bear and he did the hip, the hip movements. Um, now or never, it's now or never. You could have heard a pin drop. The, you know, the audience just let him sing, let him go with it. And it was just beautiful. Uh, you, you know, his voice just sort of went through the ceiling. Absolutely beautiful. I couldn't believe how, how much better can his voice be in person than his records. It's just, ah. Yeah, but it was. It was. Um, I forget the name of that jumpsuit he had on, but um, looked good. Wouldn't matter what he would, he could have, could have been naked for all I care. <laughs> uh, because we're on the side of the stage, a lot of the um, photos are of his back or of his side. But that's okay. And some of them it's when they're putting a scarf around his neck. Charlie, I suppose, and then that's a bit dim. Anyway, uh, and this was the scarf I got. <laughs> I didn't think I'd get a scarf. Wayne said to me when Elvis was handing them out, or throwing them out, are you going to go and get a scarf? And I said, you must be joking. I'd be squashed, all those people running toward him. And Linda heard me. And she said, honey, I'll get you a scarf. And she walked over there and Elvis handed her a scarf and she walked back and handed it to me. So I, oh, I got my Elvis scarf. <laughs> That's a story, I've got a story about that, but it's a story for another tape. Okay, uh, our friend Hedy, who took us, her and her husband took us to the concert, they were sitting, I think, 17 rows back, but she must have had a, an excellent camera because she got these photos. Let's see if I can do that better. Where are we? I'm not a really good photographer. This isn't a movie camera. It's, a mo it's an ordinary little camera with a movie function on it. So, <laughs> anyway. Oops. So that, um, they were the photos, oh and there's one more, and the songs he sung uh, started off with C.C. Ryder, I Got a Woman, Love Me, If You Love Me, You Gave Me a Mountain, Jailhouse Rock, It's Now or Never, All Shook Up, Teddy Bear, Don't Be Cruel, And I Love You So, Fever, America the Beautiful, which was because it was their bicentennial year and oh, oh god I love that song Early Morning Rain What Did I Say Johnny Be Good Love Letters Hail Hail Rock and Roll <laughs> Hurt Hound Dog Can't Help Falling In Love and wow look what can I say that was just, just fantastic um, where are we what have I got written down here ah oh. I just, I've, I've actually, I was in Toastmasters and I wrote a speech about it, and that's um, that's why I've got this things written down. Yeah. Oh, look, I will tell you about the scarf. <coughs> Last on the twentieth twentieth anniversary of Elvis's death, I sold the scarf. I sold it for three thousand dollars, and ever since then, I've had to justify my actions. People have been asking me, "How could you do that? How could you bear to part with something that Elvis Presley actually touched?" It wasn't easy, but I needed the money. 
I had a credit card debt that was out of control, I had a tax bill, car insurance payment, my car needed new tyres, we needed a new hot water source for the house. We just paid out over $1,000 to a pest control company to rid our house of termites. We are now faced, or we were faced, with a massive damage bill to replace the floors that have collapsed due to the termite damage. None of it was claimable, claimable under insurance. So $3,000 looked pretty good to me. And Shannon's Auctions in Melbourne had an auction, an Elvis auction, to commemorate um, 20 years since Elvis died. So I went in there with my scarf and a few other things and um, the auctioneer that was the last item on the list because it was obviously the most valuable and the, the bidding started at $500 and it went up a thousand, one and a half thousand, two and a half thousand, up to three thousand and it stopped. And the auctioneer looked at me and he said, well, uh, yes or no? And I said, yep, yep, that'll do fine. <laughs> so I, um, where's that photo again? Yep. I went over to the girl later who won the auction and I had some photos, these photos from the concert, and I got some copies and I gave them to her. I said, I just want you to know that that scarf is genuine. And I told her how I got it, the concert, the date and the photos. And she was absolutely wrapped. And she said, you know something? You've maxed out my credit card, but it's been worth it. And I said, well, baby, you've just paid my credit card off. And we had a laugh about that. Anyway, that's my story about the concert. Um, so if you've got any questions and you'd like to leave them on the channel here, I'll answer them. Now I'm off to make some other videos about some of the uh, souvenirs and stuff I've collected about Elvis collectibles over the years. Thanks for watching. Bye.